French fries. The best side piece you can financially support. Today we are making garlic parmesan french fries. We are using our leftovers from last week when we made the garlic parmesan wings. They're gonna be freshly hand cut. We're gonna use some fresh garlic, some fresh parmesan, a nice buttery sauce to pour on top of it. We're gonna deep fry it and it's gonna be delicious. Your mistress or lover could never. Start out with some giant russet potatoes and I've got three of them. I wanna think of each of these potatoes as like one order of fries. And so I've already washed them off, got any dirt off. And if you see any little sections like this, just like weird little knuckles, you can just go ahead and cut that off if you want to. Normally what I would do is if my potato were rounder, I would cut off a side just so it's safer as I'm cutting it. But these are weirdly large, uh, full of steroids and probably other drugs. So they, they lay flat, which is perfect. So what we really wanna try to achieve here is just cutting them in the most uniform method that we can because the more uniform that they are, the better that they will cook. Consistency is the key here. And I can already see some stuff that I wanna cut off there. You can probably see it too. So just getting through one potato. So stuff like that we don't want, cut it off. Don't worry about cutting off the skin. I mean, you can if you want to, but that takes away the fun of these looking like some shit you flex with. So cutting off those ends, if you see it anywhere else, let's see. That one's good. If anything just doesn't look appetizing to you, then cut it out. Uh, I kind of want to just go ahead and get that off because I saw little remnants there. Think about it. Would you eat those french fries? Which is what I say to every McDonald's employee. Would you eat this french fries? So now we want to just find these and get them into maybe like quarter inch, half inch pieces. And then from there, we're going to transfer it to a bowl of cold water. And let me just do a few more. These are easier when you can see it like that. Just going straight down. And if you want thicker fries, by all means, go for it. I think that's pretty uniform. Right there, and again, into the water. So let me finish cutting these up and then we'll move on to the next step. All the potatoes have been cut up into our slices. And again, we're going for kind of like that thickness there. I know they're not perfectly uniform, but it's totally fine if you don't get it perfect. Just don't go too crazy. Like, don't have a mixture of like steak size fries and then like shoestring ones. So we've got this in this water. I gave it just like a few minutes to kind of sit there. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take this water. As you can see, it's very cloudy and starchy. I'm gonna pour that water out and then I'm gonna put fresh water back into it. And then I'm gonna pop it into the fridge. And from here, you can do a couple of things. You can soak this up to 24 hours. The recommended amount of time is two to three hours, but honestly, if you're in a rush, you can soak it in as little as 30 to 45 minutes. Um, apologies to the people who are you know, steadfast by the two, three hour rule, but it's fine. As long as it's in the fridge, it's covered up with water. We're just trying to get the starch out at this point. So that's what we're about to do. Pour it out, fresh water in, into the fridge, and then on to the next part, which is pretty much just getting it fried up and sauced. Our fries were in the fridge for about 40 minutes, and I just took the bowl out, just drained the water and then I took all the fries out and I put them on some paper towels like this and then just for the top layer, I'm just going and I'm just trying to get as much moisture off this as I can because as you guys know, water and hot oil do not mix. And if you don't know, it's not a good time to find out. Definitely not for some French fries. But I've had these here for maybe about, uh, I don't know, say five minutes just to kind of let them get a little air dry. You don't want to let them hang out for too long. But now, for the first part, we're double frying these today, which is starting out with a low temperature fry, just for about five minutes, and then raising the temperature to get that nice golden crispness at the end. You can absolutely do this on your stove top in just a big ass pot of oil. And I'm using vegetable oil, but you can use peanut oil, whatever oil you have. Just be aware of people with allergies. But I have this currently set right now at 300 degrees. And so I'm gonna see how many of these I can get in here. Again, 300 degrees, five minutes. So we're gonna dip these in. Um, and if you're doing this on the stove top, just make sure that you are using something along the lines of either a meat probe, because it's still gonna probe any type of temperature, or a candy thermometer. But if you do on the stove top, you are gonna have to crank the heat up as soon as you drop these in. But 300 degrees, and in they go. Make sure they're all submerged. And then I am going to set my timer for five minutes. Do, do, do. And while we wait for that, I just want to point out that my poor choice today is a nice Pinot Grigio because we're going with the whole garlic parmesan kind of sort of Italian flavors. And I just feel like a nice crisp, dry white wine, like a Pinot Grigio or a Sauvignon Blanc. 
is perfect. Most of the time when I'm cooking and drinking, I'm drinking a wine. Um, and I think this is gonna go well together. All right, it has been five minutes. We're gonna take our fries out, let them drain just for a second. And as you can see, if you come in here, we didn't let them get crispy brown or anything like that. Just five minutes is all they needed. This is the first fry. And so once I've drained them, I'm going to put them onto a cooling rack over a paper towel. I'm not gonna put them directly onto a paper towel because I don't want these to start steaming. If you put them directly, and we've talked about this before in a previous video, if you put them on to, directly to a paper towel, they're going to begin to steam and you're gonna start losing kind of some of that crispiness that we're going for. So let's spread them out on top of the cooling rack and you can get these super cheap on Amazon. I think I paid maybe all of four bucks for these because I have multiple ones. We're gonna do that. All right, cool. Yes, burn my fingerprints off, nice. Um, we're gonna start with the second batch. So into the batch that they go for the same amount of time. And then once these are done blanching, I'm gonna let these maybe cool for about, I don't know, four or five minutes, which would be the perfect amount of time for us to start building our garlic butter to put on top. So we've got these all in and we're dropping and another five minutes. All right, second batch is done. Five minutes, 300 degrees. Gotta keep reiterating that. And on to a second cooling rack because I don't, I don't wanna mix batches up. I wanna make sure these have the appropriate amount of time. And before I throw that other batch in, what I wanna do is just get started on our garlic butter, which is really super easy. Saucepan over medium heat. And this one, I'm kind of going to go by feel, so don't take my exact measurements as a uh, religion. <laughs> but I've got a cup of unsalted butter, because we're going to add our own salt later. We want to be in control of the salt level. So we want to let that start to melt. And then what I've done is I've taken an entire head of garlic, every single clove, and I've just minced it up and ran it through my garlic press. And I have it in here. Now, I'm not gonna dump that entire thing into this mixture. I'm probably gonna do maybe about half. Um, and then the other half, I'm gonna wait till when the fries are done and I'm tossing them, and then I'll add a little bit more garlic in there. But right now, whole head of garlic, because why not? It's not like garlic costs $20. It only costs like seven right now, so. But we're gonna let our butter continue to melt, and then we'll throw our garlic in. And by the time we do that, it'll be time to throw our first batch of fries that we already fried the first time in there and then everything comes together super, super fast. All right, our butter is melted, and again, over medium heat. What I want to do right now is I'm taking some, and this is just me, I'm taking some basil-infused olive oil, and I'm gonna pour about, I'd say, a tablespoon's worth in there. You could use truffle oil if you want to, or you could use re regular olive oil or garlic-infused oil, it's whatever you want but I wanna add that basil in there just because I know that flavor is gonna mix well. And then that garlic that we minced earlier, I'm just gonna do about half. And at this point, I'm not cooking anything, I'm not sauteing anything. I'm just bringing flavors together and I can already smell that basil and that olive oil. So I want to let this go over this medium heat just for maybe another few minutes and then that'll be ready to be put on top of our fries once they're done. And then one last thing I wanna point out, I just did this, I did take our oil here, uh, our vegetable oil. It originally was at 300 degrees, now I've cranked it up to 375. Because at this point, these fries are just about ready to go in as soon as it finishes preheating, and then we're just cooking them until they're golden brown. Like, they'll be done at that point in time. So, we're gonna let, ooh, that smells so good. We're gonna let this go for a few minutes, let this get up to temperature, and then it is fry time. Okay, this has gone long enough. Again, we're not cooking anything. We're just kind of bringing all the flavors together. So let me go ahead and turn that off. Our oil is up to 375 degrees. So it is time to put our first batch that we blanched in tier. In tier, ha, right? That's a word. So into the basket it goes. They've probably been chilling for about a total of 10 minutes or so, but they'll be fine. As long as you have them on that cooling rack, they should be good. And down they go. I don't know if you want to get in. Yep, down they go. 
and now they just cook until they're golden brown. Now I'm gonna set a timer for about eight minutes, but I'm really just looking and observing to see where they're at. So away they go, and then it'll be time to, uh, to sauce and plate. And it has been just under eight minutes and my fries are looking just the way that I like them. So I just wanna give these a few seconds just to get that excess, <laughs> get that excess oil off. And then we're gonna go straight into, sorry, I'm getting OCD right now because there's like this one little droplet of oil that just won't get off, there it goes. All right, we're going straight into our bowl where we're gonna toss everything. First, we've got to salt these. I have got some black garlic salt from Jacobson uh, Salt Company, but you can use regular sea salt if you want to. I just want to keep emphasizing the saltiness and you have to always hit salt when your fries wants to come out. And I'm kind of eyeballing that. Then I want to take just a good little handful of parsley, throw it on there, maybe a little bit more. I chopped this up super fine. As you can see here, it's like fine. I was trying to think of another word to describe it, but I couldn't. And then most importantly, what we need to do is, well, two things we need to do. Fresh Parmesan, micro plane. We're going to grate that straight on. You could buy some pre-grated Parmesan, but at this point you've put in so much work. Why sell yourself short? And this is a good start. Again, there's no measurements here. You're just kind of going off of feel, but Depends on how you feel today. Do you want more Parmesan? Do you want more garlic? And then what I want to do is take our butter sauce here. Now, this is important. I could just dump this entire thing on, but I don't want to make the, so the fries soggy. So what I'm going to do is take my spoon, because I want to make sure I'm getting that garlic from the bottom, dumping it on. I'm going to just do one more of those. And then from there, we'll toss around and see, do we need more? Oh, that won't try to get away. Give it a smell, it smells good. That basil, that basil olive oil, that is the cheat code right there. So we got the perfect amount. So one last thing I wanna do before I actually plate it, there's a little bit more Parmesan, even though we're gonna put more Parmesan, ah, I'm gonna put more Parmesan on it afterwards. I just want to toss some more on there because I, in particular, like Parmesan cheese. And I'm almost done with this rind here. And then I just want to take a little bit of this garlic that we still mince. I'm going to talk about just like a little a pinch worth. Throw it on. One more toss and then we're plating. I'm excited because there's still a whole nother batch of fries to make. Let's get ready to put these on. I hope I can't see. Nice. Boom. And then because I don't necessarily respect the boundaries of food, I cooked up a little bacon here. And I'm just gonna drop it on. Bacon? Bacon. Oh. Luckily I cleaned this countertop, so. Just some bacon. So there you go, garlic, Parmesan fries, and you are damn right. I'm going to absolutely try these, and I'm getting excited because I still have another batch. And you know, perhaps I messed up this first batch. So that's the cool thing about this, is if you're, maybe you're planning a date, and you mess up the first batch, it never happened, you have this to go. And that's the first rock right there. I mentioned it during when I was scooping on the, uh, the garlic butter, you don't need a lot because it will make your fries soggy very quickly. And so that bite got a little soggy, but I can see some of these are still more crisp. So just be mindful of that. You're, you're gonna be tempted just to go, ah! And if you like your fries like that, it still tastes delicious. But if you're looking for a good crisp fry, just be mindful of that. But yeah, that's Poor Choices Kitchen. That's our fries. Uh, we are about to feast. It's almost nine o'clock and I've got a nice little strong buzz going on, so it, is yeah we're, we're done we're done that's it that's the tweet